stuff, things I'm working with. But if you look over here, you can see I have an endless amount of power. I basically have my own oil well. Think about that. You become the richest man in the world. The richest man in the world. And I can set my oil well up anywhere I want. Look at this. I can tap in anywhere, around, anywhere I want. I got the whole globe. Look how much hydrogen I have. It's an endless amount of fuel. You know, I don't have to go searching on land or go fracking or anything like that. I can just get the water anywhere I want. It falls right out of the sky. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to condition this fuel cell. I'm getting it ready. I've set some of these temperatures by heating it up. Been running it for a little while. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just running it. I'm getting it to the point that I want so I can pull enough amps. Let me turn it on here. So I'm working out of the kitchen right now. I actually have an extension cord coming in here. Uh, see, I'm not quite where I want to be. See, I'm pulling. I want to pull about five amps. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do some underwater welding. I got this nail in there. But let me go ahead and finish my lunch, and then we'll do this, you know. Think about that, all that energy. So, so the fuel is no longer our concern, you know. We have that. It's getting the electricity, coming up with the electron. We're going to cover that too in this video. So we got to start somewhere. So we're going to start with the table of elements. We're going to start looking closer at these atoms. We're going to go balls out here in science. We're going to, I'm going to show you guys everything I got today going on here. We're going to talk a little bit more about the electron. Let's go into the sodium atoms folder here because that's what we're talking about today. This is very important. So your chemistry is also very important when you're working with HHO gas or any electrolysis for that matter. So you can see the uh, sodium atom here, and it's set up. Its symbol is Na. You can find it on the table of elements. It's number 11, it's an atomic number. It's a very simple atom. You can see that electron in its third outer orbital. You know, it only has one electron there, so it's it's extremely reactive element. We're going to talk more about chemistry and electrolytes and sodium atoms and I'm going to cover some stuff about what you put in the water, you know, it's not just about the water that you choose, whether you're using distilled water, spring water, or water right out of the canal. Let's take a look here. So we're going to cover more about molecules later. This is Brownian motion. We talked about that in another video. So it is hard to believe that your water is jolting around and your glass of water is full of water molecules. So here's more on the sodium atom. Go back and read this. It's number 11 on the table of elements over here. So I'm conditioning this fuel cell right now. I've adjusted the electrolyte with my sodium carbonate. You see, here's my sodium carbonate that I'm using as my electrolyte. I'm using this to lower the resistance in the water. Simple ingredients, simple solutions. So it's very important to understand your chemistry when working with the wet cell. See, sodium right here, it's on the table of elements, it's number 11. And that's a highly reactive metal. When you throw that in the water, it creates hydrogen. So salt that you see on the on the table at home, on the cooking table, is sodium and chlorine. So it's two elements. It's sodium chloride, and that's what makes up your table salt that you see at home. Now that's very different from, from the sodium carbonate that you see over here that I use. It's very different. So let me make sure you understand the difference between the two. go back and read this and it'll help you understand. So the old name for washing soda was natrium. Hydrosodium carbonate. 
So they named it after its more sedate cousin, the sodium carbonate, instead of salt. We we'll go down there. We're gonna underwater weld that nail you see right there. <laughs> it's welded to the stick. Can't even get it off of there. But you can see I can weld underwater. Whoa! See, all this technology works underwater too. So I wanted to show you guys. Let me try it again. See? You can weld underwater. All this technology works underwater. fast I had to slow it down the flame is extremely hot right there You know, I'm trying to show you guys as many of these elements as I can because when the shit hits the fan, you're not going to have all this advanced technology on your hands. You're not going to be able to run down to the store and just grab things really easily. You know what I'm saying? Now, a wet cell, I could build this damn thing out of a garbage can and some spatulas. It wouldn't take me much to build it. You know, I wouldn't have to build it with all these pretty lights and things like this. It's the technology that's important here. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys. You know, you could build things in your own image. You know, understanding the wet cell technology is what's important. Now, when it comes down to the end of the world, 
you know, you're not even going to be able to run down to the store to get some thread tape. So you got to remember that when you build things, you want to build it, you know, economically. You want to build it with the least amount of parts in the simplest way possible. It's very important just to get like little pieces like this, things like this, you know, adapters for hoses and stuff. There's a few things that I would I would need that I could find in the environment. There's plenty of garbage laying around, you know. You got to be able to build these things out of what's available. And that was what the wet cell was all about originally. It was about advanced technology, but simple. You know, you may be stuck with having to just take a leak in one of these things, you know. You might be stuck using your own urine in a couple of solar panels. I mean, but that's what, that's what HHO, that's what hydrogen's all about. You know, once you got your hands on the water, you got the fuel. You just got to have a way to get it out. You got to be clever. You got to find ways to make the electricity on your own. Now see, making HHO, you got to have power coming in, you know. To do this like I do, I have this reactor's resting right now. But I'm going to turn it on real quick just to show you. When I turn this thing on, it's going to start and it's going to already be at high amperage and at a high wattage. You see? I have the electrolyte set like that. That's why I'm teaching you guys about the sodium carbonate. Because I use that as an electrolyte. I use it to lower the resistance of the water to produce the gas at an enormous rate. So it doesn't come through as fast as you would think. You have to be real close to that flame. See that flame has different temperature zones if you look at it real closely. It's kind of hard to show it on the camera. It has like a white zone, an orange, a yellow. Let's put some water in there, see what it does. That's why we're covering some of this today. I mean, you may not have all this technology. I mean, not right off the bat, you know, once you guys get your reactors going and stuff. I'm just trying to show you guys, you don't have to rely on advanced technology. You don't have to rely on, on, you can get this stuff out of the environment, but you don't need all these advanced LEDs, technology. I mean, think about that. You can do this, it's simple, it's very simple. You know, like charges repel, opposites attract. You guys gotta get back to nature. I mean, you have the energy now. You have the power plant. That's what the Pulsar was all about. To produce an endless amount of electrons. Think about that, an endless amount of electricity from water. So we'll go back into the sodium atoms folder here. We're going to cover this again, like I said. Whatever it takes to teach you guys. So you got to remember the sodium atom is super reactive. Sodium metal is very reactive. We'll cover more in the future. We'll cover more elements, and that's what it's all about. You know, learning your chemistry is a huge part to HHO. You know, covering the wet cell and the basics. You do got to know some chemistry. We'll cover more in the future.